build the quantifiable value proposition. Everyone in this room is familiar with what's going on with convergence. What does convergence do? Use your handset more. Use your handset more, what happens? You use more energy. Andy Grove would say we've reached an inflection point where the battery technology is not keeping up with the energy consumption of the handset. And that's what this chart shows us here. We're now starting to see as the 3G and the 4G and we use our handsets more, the energy consumption of the handset is actually outstripping the capabilities of the battery technologies as time goes by. And when we look at this, we always like to understand what's that driving force? It's a lot of the things that we're working on, the media flows, the services groups, right? Some of the new QC chipsets. This shows you those activities that require a display to be on, they're coming on more often. And in fact, in 2011, it shows over 40% of the on time will be dictated by these types of applications. Why do I show you that? Because the display is one of the major violators, one of the major consumers of power in a handset. If that application requires the display to be on, you've now just turned on the biggest energy consumer in the handset. To take that one more level down, many of the solutions in 2006, and we see the same trend in 2007, they put a bigger battery in. But the bigger battery is not the right answer. The bigger battery has a direct impact on cost. It has a direct impact on style. You can't make the phone as thin. Okay, so you make the battery thin, make the battery wider. Oops, now you've created a bezel where the display is and there is no display. I mean, you have to put a bigger display in. You get the challenges here. The battery isn't the solution. The solution needs to be lower energy consuming components, like the Mirasol. And this chart will show how the Mirasol is compared to those two technologies that are the most dominant in the handsets right now, the OLEDs and the LCDs. And what you should focus on is this bottom line here, typical power consumption. We can be as low as one milliwatt in a static state versus the competitors who are far above that. 280 milliwatts for an AMOLED, excuse me, AMLCD. No, back that up. AMOLED is 280 milliwatts. The LCD is 240 milliwatts. That's huge. It's a big number and you think, wow, you've quantified it, I don't need any more. Can't stop there. You gotta keep driving this value proposition. So you go to the next level. We took a model and we took it with a Mirasol display and an LCD. Mirasol's on the top, the LCD's on the bottom. And we said, by each application that we talked about earlier, right, that requires a display to be on, what's the energy consumption being taken away by the display during that activity? And if you're doing text messaging, during that activity, the LCD is consuming 73% of the energy just sending a text message, whereas the Mirasol is as little as 10%. And you can see how that flows through the rest of those activities. That's tremendous but we're not done quantifying it. You've got to still boil it down a little bit farther. So now what we did is we took that model and we represented it as how much video time would you get if you had a handset with a Mirasol versus one with an LCD? And those phones on the left here, those show you that if you bought a handset and all you did was watch video, it would give you four and a half hours with the Mirasol and give you 3.3 hours with the LCD. Now that's not very realistic, is it? We buy our handsets and we use it for phone calls and text messaging and surfing the internet. So the second column in, we actually applied a usage model to it, where this person has 90 minutes of phone calls, 20 text messages, some lookups, et cetera. And then we show at the end of the day how much video time they have. Now you get 206 minutes with a Mirasol-enabled handset, about 70 minutes with the LCD. And that's probably kind of a light usage model. The far right's more realistic, probably more realistic of most of the people in this room. A little more heavy activity, and at the end of the day, there's a huge difference in the time left to watch video. There's enough time left on the video for the Mirasol where you can get in that last issue of Sopranos and you'll definitely get to watch American Idol. There's got to be a few American Idol fans in here. So that's kind of a snapshot of the value proposition. And earlier I talked about how do you drive that through the value chain. This is the value chain on how our display gets to the marketplace. We have to work with the designers, we have to work with the manufacturers, we have to work with the handset product managers, the carriers even, and the users. And everywhere through this chain, we've quantified the value proposition. The handset designers, I think you've already got that figured out. We're making it possible for them now to look at using thinner and smaller batteries. And thin and small is in with handsets. That's a very easy discretion to have with the handset designer. What about the manufacturer? If he can go from a 900 milliamp hour battery to a 720, he might make a buck or save a buck 50. So that's easy, he likes that, he gets to save money. How about the product managers? 
they're constantly frustrated with meeting the user's expectations. They're never getting enough energy out of that handset to make sure that they make it through the day for every charge that they have. We've now given him more energy, and he can add more features that will differentiate his handset. How about the carriers? This is all about ARPU for them, available average revenue per user. We improve, we can show that we can improve their ARPU with available revenue time. We can increase their available revenue time, which is how much time during the day and in between charges your handset's operating. Some carriers we put their model in, we can show $12 per handset per year if they just put in a Mirasol display. I mean, you think 12 bucks, yeah, not a big deal, right? You got 10 million users? <laughs> you got the idea. And then the users themselves. You can meet their expectations. You'll probably exceed their expectations in many cases. You can make it in some developing countries where they don't have to carry an extra battery. We get a chance to charge multiple times per day. How many times do you think they get a chance to uh, charge in India? Sometimes it's every time two, three days, and they carry an extra battery just in case. We can save them 40 bucks. So then let's talk about the screen performance, which is another area of the technology that's important. Sunlight viewability. 70% of those that use their handsets in China are not happy with their handset performance outside. Why do you think that is? We drive to work. We drive to school. We drive to the store. They walk to work. They walk to the store. They walk to school. They're outside more often. Therefore, the display performance in high ambient environments is very important to them. It is amazing as you look at this chart how people, whether it be in the United States or China or Africa, alter their usage of their handset to see it outside. Some of the insane responses are on the left. Some people don't even look at their handsets outside. Most cover it with their hand. Most go to the nearest tree. Most wait till they're back in the building. This is one of those classic marketing issues where there's a problem. There just isn't an opportunity or a solution to show them. And then we'll be able to easily pull this out in the marketplace with the Mirasol because it is sunlight viewable. And the main reason why it's sunlight viewable is not just because it's a reflective technology. It's because, and I think some of you in this room have seen these charts before, they're very good at showing how we compete against the, the competitors outside. These charts show in a dim room on the left and the bright outdoor on the right, the first one is for contrast, and the second one is for color, color gamut, or otherwise known as color depth. We are the blue line. As you go from a dim room all the way out to the bright outdoors, the display technology stays the same. Our image quality stays the same, whereas competing technologies drop dramatically. It makes the sunlight viewable, but it's more than just that. There's actually more to this. It gives us consistent viewing quality, and consistent viewing quality is if you have a picture of your significant others and you look at it indoors and then you look at it at the baseball game, it should look the same. But the competing technologies aren't able to do that. And this is another area that we need to draw that out and show it. And this one shows a TFT next to a Mirasol as it goes from a very dim room to the very bright outdoors. <laughs> 